Hello, my name is Chris Athanis. Uh, I am here today to talk about this app called Fred's Road Trip Storyteller. Um, it's a basically a demonstration app for a cross-platform um, development using Android and iOS. Uh, and I wanted to make a full app using uh, the new Compose UI and the KM can compose UI for iOS. Um, it's already for Android. Um, and uh, make a full app out of it and put it in the store and do it uh, for uh, uh, for an open source project. Uh, and my my stepdad, Fred, came up with this idea because he's always traveling around in his RV uh, that he wanted to listen and hear these markers as he drove by. And he, there's nothing like it like that does this. So... That's a thought with this be an interesting project to do. And uh, yeah, I'm going to walk through the app and show what it's about. Um, and here's the, uh, here's the GitHub page for it. It's on GitHub on my, on my Realix bedroom. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the show notes. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty fully fledged. We're basically in a, alpha still we're almost at the end of alpha almost at a beta uh, some of the ui elements um need to be tweaked some of the graphics need to be tweaked but it's pretty much functional um i do have a race condition i found at a very at using by deploying on the ios so uh, we may see some of those issues as we as we as i show off the app but i wanted to show it at this state and then show how i fix it um and you can keep a track of that with the open on my open this open source project here um, and here's the um, the wiki which I went over with some of the designs of what uh, what the app was uh, what we're trying to do with the app and some of the original artwork for it um, and here's the uh, the marketing site um, and uh, you know it's got some of this, it's kind of feels still not fully fleshed out but it's live the the URL is live and this is my uh, to do to do list if you want to see how far I, I am on the project. And uh, I'm not using any pull requests, but I'm doing all the project management is inside of GitHub, which is pretty awesome, actually. And the hosting for this site is actually inside of GitHub, too. And I have a uh, registered URL and I'm pointing it to at the GitHub. And I can explain how I did that at some point if you'd like. But here's the, the Android side of it. Um, there's an iOS side too. I'm not going to demo any of the code today, but this is, you know, this is the app here and this is the, uh, this is the, what I've been working on here. So, um, here is, uh, the initial launch, um, of the app from, from a raw state. We don't use any user accounts. We would, uh, respect people's privacy. Uh, so Fred wanted, uh, so it was like, okay, no tracking. There's no tracking of our, there's nothing sent to our servers. We actually don't have any servers right now. We're using the hmdb.org website, scraping it, and using that as the data live as you drive around. Uh, it collects it live. So we don't download the whole database. We download little pieces at a time as you go. Um, and I think we'll be eventually add, being able to add, add markers that aren't, that aren't known in the database yet. So we'll just launch it from the initial state and um this is all composed back here uh this is of course android os and uh it's really interesting uh i'm an android primary de developer android and web uh, but primarily android that's what i've been working on professionally and i just started working with ios in the last i don't know six months or so since kmp was started coming out i was like i just dipped my toe in ios i hadn't looked at it all because i thought it was gonna be just as much of a bear as Android, because Android is pretty hard. It's pretty complicated little piece of kit. Compose is really radically simplified that, which is like where, why I'm kind of excited about it and why I want to show off this project. But iOS is a lot, it seems like a lot easier, especially with this permissions. This is like a whole, you have to do a special class and all these resources and all these special uh, yeah, permissions. But in iOS is like one line and one one check mark some, uh, on one of the settings. And it's like, oh, you just get the location. You use your background tracking location anytime you want. Like, okay, that's a little more space. So I'm learning some things about iOS that makes me kind of happy because with Swift UI and iOS, it may, it's, it, and Compose are very much similar way of doing things. And um, I don't know, it's been pretty eye-opening. And also using 
uh, GitHub co 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 copilot, the GitHub chat GPT copilot to navigate through the iOS is like been pretty amazing actually. So um, I wouldn't be able to do that, do it without that. So, so I'm having a little racing issue right here. So I'm going to reset this cache. I might have to re rerun it again, but this is one of the bugs I'm working on um, right now. And um, okay, so here's the main screen. And you can see there's this red, these red markers here. Those haven't been seen yet. This is the little scene radius. This is, of course, your location. Uh, you can turn our heat map on, uh, which is only got three markers right now, so you're not going to see much heat heat map activity. Um, and you can, we're going to increase the scene radius here. So, yeah. San so as soon as the radius, it takes, uh, you know, gets in the scene radius, you, um, it's added to the, uh, Add to the list of recently seen markers and spoken, and uh, whether you want to see it, hear the markers or not could be in the settings right here. Whether you want to see that, oh. <laughs> um, so you can have it to speak the markers or not. And if you can, and if you speak the markers, it can actually speak all the details um, on the uh, on the marker itself. Um, and you can turn the background tracking on automatically and. Uh, also show uh, the data, these more data on the map about like some debugging data, which I think I'm gonna check off, uh, but basically shows like all these different concentric circles of like, we're scrolling around and where, where it has, I have to do some optimizations to on um, Google Maps, because I don't think it was designed for how well we're actually using it. I hope they improve it. They're gonna, they probably are gonna improve it, but I've had to do some serious workarounds to, um, just have the clustering work on lower uh, capacity phones, lower uh, performance phones. Um, so here we have uh, the ability. So you see that this has the five recently seen markers here, and this is the last spoken marker. Um, you can have you can speak it again by the San Joseph Cupertino. Just have it play again, or it can play the full description if you play this with the hit the button. The details for Arroyo de San Joseph Cupertino has inscription reading Arroyo de San. Open up. This royal. So you can stop it from there. You can open up the bottom sheet, and uh, this is uh, this is all. Uh, you know, you can zoom into these different uh, windows. This is all compose. Uh, ex no extra anything, just regular old compose code, which is all amazing. Uh, you can navigate from here, or you can locate it on the map from here. And of course, you can you know there's photos, all the different data. They're coming from the HMDB database, which is uh, we do give credit here in the about box. And here in the about box is how to use this app. We have some uh, optional onboarding. I really don't like it when the pop-ups happen. I'd rather go find on my own. Uh, and most people are going to go to that three-button menu at some point, and they'll find this, you know, the onboarding this way. And we, I feel this is a little less intrusive. Um, this is all straight compose as well. Um, here we go about this app. Uh, so you can purchase. So that also in this app, which shows I showed you how to do cross-platform purchases for both iOS for in-app purchases for both iOS and uh, Android. <laughs> so I figured that stuff out using uh, messaging back and forth using Flow. So we're using Flow to come uh, to go back and forth, shared flows, and um, what they have a, an adapter I found that for KMP that does common flows, so you can go back and forth between the Swift code and the iOS. And uh, and the, the core. So and it's uh, I'll, I'll go into more detail when I do the code review. But that's part of this app as well, which is it took me a while to figure that stuff out. It's not exactly obvious how to do that, but it's now obvious if you look at how I do it. Um, so we got a little search here for um, different for the you know, if you want to do a, a, basically on titles only search. Um, and if you close the window there, it keeps the search here, so we, you can get quite a few. We're gonna you know, thousands of these markers here. I'm probably going to have a better way of managing it, but right now it's fine for this MVP. It's, it's perfectly okay. Um, and you can also purchase the pro version, which, you know, on iOS, it uses the, 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 the iOS is the Apple store and on Google, it uses this, uh, the Google play one tap uh, in app. So that's all that source code is there. And the common stuff has been commonized in this, the platform specific stuff has been separated out and showed how that works. 
uh, inside of a Compose app. But pr most of the app, I'd say 95, 99, 98, 99, I'll have to calculate. Most of it's a Compose. It's all Kotlin. That's all KMP uh, libraries. Um, or things that haven't worked so quite well with KMP that I've had to like look at how they implement it and redo it. And you can, but like location, for the background location tracking. Um, so you can click on each one of these markers and you can open up the details here from the marker. Um, you can, that's, it, that's about it. We can turn the background tracking on. <coughs> and um, I have it installed Lakito on here so we can see how it looks as you drive along. Let me turn the tracking on it. You can hear it. Captain Elisha Stevens. So that flashingness there, you know, the Google Maps wasn't really set up for how I'm using it. I think it was big. They kind of designed it just for stills and I've made it so it's animated and, uh, you know, in involve uh, a lot more going on. Um, what can happen is there's can be so many markers, even with the clustering on that, the the frame rate drops. So I've got a bunch of code in there for for um for for reducing the cluster size as you travel along and here's another a warning here that pops up when uh you've got a density area when you come into an area that's got more than um more than five markers as you come along i mean i'm going 10 times faster than normal here but you know you can go into areas which you know when you, that that scene radius will have more than five markers and it'll blow away the rest of the items in this list you can only have five here um and uh so that's that's that little warning coming up saying hey that's you've already blown away the list here so um but the, all of them are retained here so you can always go get the list there so that's that's always available but the five top ones you know usually aren't going this fast through an area but you know in this test you know test case test mode you can see that, that we are going that fast so these different rings represent different things this yellow one is actually the the current loaded radius, so it'll only ro loads two miles at a time as you drive along. Um, and the uh, this this first ring is when is for if you are driving along and you come out of this outside this ring, uh, it's it limits the uh, constrains the the view of the cluster. So it just constrains the size of the cluster uh, to increase frame rate performance. Um, I had a lot of problems trying to uh, get Google Maps to with its constraint uh, with its uh, uh, clustering algorithm to work efficiently without totally bogging down the, the the device so it can't even be used. So it's got a lot of stuttering theories. So I've got some kind of funky code in there to like optimize for that as best as I could. I'm hoping that at some point Google will improve this uh, functionality because I'm sure that people know about it or are aware of these issues. Uh, it's definitely like trying to use a Google Maps in the old Android way, the very imperative way, but not really designed for Compose. They put a kind of put a, a wrapper around Compo the, uh, the standard Android library, but it really needs to be written for specifically for Compose. They also have a Compose, um, you know, they have their own Compose like version of it, but it's just, it, it's very not performant for animated type stuff like this for the needs that needs to be interactive. It's just not there right now. Uh, so I've got a lot of workarounds in there. So you can see what I've done. Maybe there's somebody out there that knows more about like how to do that better, but it works great. I feel um, except for this race condition when there's, when there's things are being loaded at the same time. Um, right now I'm using, um, uh, a different type of a way basically that that's contentious for the for the resource at the same time for the database resource and i'm about to make it into a flow which will totally take that problem away and not have that race condition i and it, it, this was i was getting away i'm kind of getting away with it here on android but on ios it, it's totally like the implementation is like slightly different so it, it shows up there and i'm not going to be demoing the ios version today but like i will demo that eventually um let me see what else. Um, okay, I wanted to say that a little bit about this this area here. Um, it it'll it'll show when the uh, show a little icon when uh, when data is being loaded, 
and it's when it's being parsed. So we actually go to the as we go to the HMDB website as a user, and then go to, and do do their search from their website. They don't have an API, but that doesn't matter. We just look at their data, scrape it uh, right there on the spot, and then um, that's what we use to populate the database here, uh, your 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 local database. Um, so you get to you just collect them as much as much as you want, and then you, if you don't, you know, when you're ready to like clear them out, you can clear them out there. Uh, we're not saving them anywhere. Uh, we are thinking about maybe using a user account if you need if you want to save your save the markers that you've driven on. Um, we're thinking about doing that um, at some point. Uh, you know, so people can. Uh, save all the markers that they've been to. But right now we just want to do it, no tracking, no user accounts. So we want to build, make an app that did that. Um, so that's kind of one of the design goals of this. Um, hold on. Okay, so the last thing is like, when the reason why we have this uh, switch here for tracking and not tracking is in the background is when you are in the background, you know, we have a notification here, um, right here, that shows uh, as you're collecting markers, and you can also, you know, pause the, the the speaking from the from the notification. This is also this is required by Android to have this notification up. Uh, iOS doesn't have that same thing. It just has like a little flashing, like a little navigation thing, it's a little flashing in the corner. Uh, and you tap it, it goes to the app that's that's currently doing the background tracking. Now we don't send this data anywhere. We just use it to figure out where your location is, so we can look at the HMDB um, uh, to. Uh, to, to then load up load up more markers, um, and it does this little puts this little that that's that's the that's automatic. Uh, puts that little circle there, lets you know we're being tracked. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, so if you want to check out the project, there's a, again there it is on the GitHub, and um, I really appreciate you checking this out, and we'll do a little bit more of a code dive uh, in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.